I have no doubt I'm gonna get in trouble over this. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. I know I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> because I'm going to say something that's going to offend somebody. I'm sure. I'm opening my mouth. Somebody's going to be offended. <laughs> anyway, I just got a comment um, from a sub. At least I I think you're a sub. Mark, are you a subscriber? I, I don't know. We don't, we don't get to know. Channel owners rarely get to know who our subscribers are, it seems like. But uh, a guy named Mark Fryer commented on uh, one of my videos recently. And he asked me about my tongs, and he asked specifically about stress and, and the turning and the, and the mechanism I have. And it's a great question because I struggled with that uh, very question when I designed my tongs. And these are, so these are, uh, these are my tongs. And yes, I did design them. They're pretty simple. They've just got two pieces of round stock and a couple of plates. I've actually just got a nail driven through here to... Um, as, a, as a pivot point. Uh, I built a couple of little tabs on right there just to make sure that my um, uh, whatever this handle part would come up inside. They got the same thing down here just, just to keep it straight. Now the deal with these things is, so here's my crucible. I want them to be able to open up so I can get them around the crucible and then I want them to close uh, so that when I lift the crucible, it they they it holds the crucible up, right? The crucible doesn't f just fall out of here, and that was the whole. That was what the, how these things work. Now, what Mark is referring to is me not being able to hold on to things. Let me uh, if I could do this without breaking it. There we go. Is when I pour. If I can hold it up this way for you, when I pour with this with this mechanism. Watch what happens with the crucible. You see where it's rotating? It's rotating right here. And I got that. I understood that when I built these things. I understood that this was going to be me lifting the crucible uh, in a fashion that is not really conducive to, um, I think, an optimal pour. And I really struggled with the idea of maybe what I should do is figure out a way to lower this so it's down here, right? Because when you look at a a real, well, I would call real, uh, and I was almost going to say traditional, but man, there's like a thousand designs for these things out there. This is another another sub of mine, a guy named Norbert out of California. His over here, that's what his looks like, and this is kind of standardish, and in fact that it's a it's a shank with a ring on it. That what happens is. The crucible gets lifted out, typically it will get lifted out of the furnace from the top, right? Like, just like so. Then it gets set down on a surface that has the shank already on it, right? The shank is laying there and it's a full ring all the way around. And basically what happens is that's sitting there and then you set the crucible down, around, down here and then the shank is encompassing the uh, the crucible. When you lift the shank up, because of the tapered design of these crucibles, it eventually gets tight, and so your shank is now a ring around your crucible holding it up, and it's holding it up right at, around the midpoint. So now when I rotate this thing, rather than the way it rotated with, with mine, where it rotates out around the center, now with a shank, it rotates around the midpoint, which I believe is a much better design um, just because of the loads involved. And this is a six kilogram crucible, uh, at least what's left of it. <laughs> and what that means is when you melt brass in here, it weighs six kilograms. And that's how they get the numbers. It's, a, it's the weight of brass in the crucible. So this is a six kilogram crucible. That means, you know, to those of us in America, that means 12 pounds, okay? Um, so if this thing were full of brass and I'm lifting it the way I lift it, and it's coming up this direction, I'm having to lift. Through here, it's not too bad, right? I'm not lifting that much. But when I start getting up halfway, I'm lifting the full weight 
not really the full weight because some of it's already poured out, but I'm lifting the full weight up here. And uh, that's not optimal. What I did to counteract that, I know I'm going to drop that thing. And then we're going to get into why I made these. What I did to counteract that is this guy right here, this handle that you see out here. So when I'm pouring now, I have one hand that's balancing things. And with the crucible in there, I kind of position it. So this hand is the midpoint weight-wise. And then I've got out, out here, I've got my pivot. And it's very easy for me to control uh, the pour this way. I have a lot of control with this handle on the end here. It's not like I'm trying to turn it, you know, this way. I've got this nice T out here. That's how mine works. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you a real pour here, and we're going to look at it and just kind of look at the mechanics. But here's why I did what I did. First of all, I know me. And I know that if I had to pull that crucible out of the furnace and set it down on something and then pick it up again with something on there on the outside, there is a distinct possibility I'm either going to A, drop it, or B, I'm going to knock it over. And because that's just, I, I know that that's what happens, and I can be as careful as I want. I know me, and I know that things, accidents happen like that. And I wanted to minimize the possibility for an accident. So that's why I built this. This mechanism allows me to go down inside the, the furnace, clamp onto the crucible, take it out, pour it, put it back down in the furnace, release it, and get them out of there. All one thing. I don't have to set the thing down. I don't have any intermediate steps. So for me, it's a trade-off, right? It's a trade-off of having that center of gravity swinging out versus rotating, right? Um, and I got to believe that if this thing was heavier, if I was using a bigger crucible, a, a traditional shank would probably be a better way for me to pour. Um, in fact, you know, you see the shanks with two handles on it. If you get heavy enough, you want somebody else out there holding up half of it while you're working the pour. So anyway, that's, that's what it is. So let's look at, let's watch how my pour, I'll set it up. I'm going to melt some aluminum. I've got a bunch of scrap I want to get rid of. Um, and we'll watch it. We'll watch a pour. And we'll see how it how it happens, and uh, and you can just kind of we can talk about the mechanics of it as it's as it's going on. So let me get let me get some metal melted, and we'll uh, we'll do another pour. Okay, we got the got the crucible, and I want you to pay close attention to how see see where it's going now. Well, look what happens here too. I'm already pour. I'm not even. I'm not even a quarter of the way around, and I got metal coming out. So the, the weight is the weight is lessening the whole time I'm pouring. So by the time I'm pouring up here at the edge or halfway point, I've got most of the metal uh, out of this thing. Let's see if we can't do that. I'm down here with you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, melting. I'll come back to you in a minute. I'm going to just make, keep making a bunch of ingots tonight and give her some scrap. Well, there you go. A, a stack of ignis, ig, ingot, ingots, ingots, <laughs> ingots, that even Big Stack D would be proud of. So, good night of uh, scrap maintenance for me. But uh, let, me, let me put the camera back on me and I'm going to talk one last thing to you. Alright, so you never see me really, you really never see me, but this is what I look like when I'm pouring and when I'm melting stuff in the furnace. I realize this is probably not the best PPE, first personal protective equipment, as it's called, but it's better than nothing, and it's certainly better than uh, wearing shorts and uh, tennis shoes and everything else that uh, you see all over the place. So it's all about safety out here, guys. Uh, believe it or not, it really is. Try to be safe. And that's one of the reasons my, I'm going to close it out with this thing. When you see me pour, I'll hold it way up here. 
look, look where I am in relationship to my pour. I'm way off to the side, and my pour is going that way. It's going away from me. So I'm never pouring towards myself. I'm always pouring away from myself. I'm always a good distance away from where it's pouring. The same would be true if, if I had a, a more traditional shank. I would be doing the same thing. I would be holding it, and I'd be pouring it out over there somewhere, and I'd be pouring it away from me. So that's the kind of the key for me. I mean, whether you do tongs like I did them, and I know people out there hate them, or you do a shank, whichever you do, do something that's safe. <laughs> all right, that's all I have for you tonight. You guys have a great day, and we'll be back with a pretty cool casting. I got two good castings in mind here um, that I'm hoping to get to in the next couple of days, so going to be some cool stuff coming up. Trust me.